The South Congress podcast is a lifestyle show that sometimes crosses over into mature territory. The views expressed are those of the hosts and guests who come from different backgrounds and experiences. Listener discretion is advised. You're going to go like all her pictures? Not all of them, just the last two posts. That'd be weird if I liked every single post. Just, I said the last two, goddammit. I posted them yesterday. Is that there? I double posted. I broke social media rules. <sighs> It's the South Congress Podcast, episode 89. My name is Cameron. And I'm Peanut. And I'm Megan. So yeah, we're here with Megan. Um, the Stallion. Let's talk about how this came together first. The original. So there you go. It, it's a funny convo, because I explained this to somebody yesterday. We were at the park, because that's where we do things, right? And, and people. Megan and her friend Doris were next to us. They're waiting on drinks, and they're clearly not getting the waitress's attention. Because we have vaginas. Can I say that? You can say vaginas on this show. Awesome. Peanut and I are there all the time, mm -hmm. so we might have a little bit of pull with the waitresses. And also because they have penises. Nice ones. <laughs> I would not know. So, <laughs> with that said, right, hey, um, when, when the waitress comes to us, she actually says, um, oh, yeah, she's like, what do you need? We tell her our drinks. And I'm like, hey, get them some drinks, too. Now, ordinarily, ordinarily, a woman would be like, oh, thank you for buying the drink. Um, can you do me a favor? Can you make sure that's recording? Yeah, because we just had a great intro. And if it's yeah, because I, I don't want that. Make sure the video's going. It's counting. Thank you so much. Somebody's not going to put their voice on camera. That's fine. But normal people would say, hey, thank you for buying us a drink. Megan said, oh, so you be here a lot, huh? <laughs> That's and what from, it is. No, from that moment on, me and Megan were best friends. Because it was just like to be transparent to somebody when you can just be transparent is a great feeling. So um, eventually it was like, hey, Meg, when are you going to have time to do our show? And we had to reschedule a few times because Meg is a busy person. But here Looked we are. And busy. Yeah. So here we are. Um, welcome to the South Congress podcast, Meg. Thanks. Ordinarily, how we open this show is talking about our weeks. So we'll do it a bit different. Um, Peanut always goes first. No, I'll no, no, go no. sec. Oh, sorry. Let's Meg. keep it the same. Let's okay. not switch anything. Well, out. I mean, so because we it's typically the two of us. So He's do you want to go first about your week? I'll Meg? go last. Okay, we can do that. Like her That's what I was going to say anyway. Um, Peanut, how was your week, sir? Very simple. Hung out with Javi, Steve, and those guys. Uh, you know, Steve and them say hi. Yeah. Um, talks a biz with Javi about, you know, your birthday. So okay. hopefully we can swing through and you can get that uh, going on. A short and story. Like, and, and definitely, uh, yeah. whenever we next go to San Antonio, we got to go to that bar. I'm telling okay. you, the, the lost souls from Antro ended up at this bar. Okay. All the hoes end up there. For anybody, like I've said this a million times, Steve Hernandez is the best person I know. Mm -hmm. Like bar none. He's the very best person I've ever met. Way back. I wish you could be like that. When too. I was, I wish too. Way back when I was <laughs> dating a girl and got into some trouble, Steve helped me out through a rough situation. Um, and I'll forever be grateful to Steve. He, he's, he's great. Um, Javi is also great and hilarious for buying that guy's land. <laughs> That's, that's a super inside story. Um, Thunder Lane, baby. Oh, my goodness. Get your underground um, barbecue on Thunder Lane. So, no. So, my week, um, I always start where we start. We recorded the show Saturday, actually, right? Mm -hmm. um, normally, we do it on a Sunday. Um, I didn't go back to Comic-Con because I had things happening. Um, a young lady took me to the most hood tailgate I've ever been to. I want to go to that one. So... If you're listening to this show, if you're from San Antonio or Austin, like this will make sense. All you hood boys, come find me. We go to the tailgate and I look around. It's like 95% Hispanic, right? Ooh. They're all wearing the black Texas jersey. Oh, they're nasty, nasty. With Lokes and Air Maxes. So I knew it. I knew what time it was. The women too? <laughs> yes. Oh. I knew what time oh, it was. Oh my God. So, <laughs> so not only are they wearing that, but then I go look at the mm -hmm. food, right? Mm -hmm. Enchiladas, ground beef, and hard shell tacos. Oh, someone got pregnant. That I said, I said, you know what? Mm. Keep my hands in my pockets. I'm gonna cheer for what they cheer for. If <laughs> if they're going for Kansas State, 
I fuck with Kansas. <laughs> I don't want no smoke. Um, they so probably yeah. can fight, but I'm telling you, I don't. They shoot. <laughs> fuck True. True. Yeah, fuck True. fighting. <laughs> um, so we did that, um, and then we did the normal. Oh, we'll talk about Sunday, but on last week's show, it was Peanuts' birthday. Happy belated birthday to anybody thank who you, didn't thank you. listen or watch. Um, homie court is definitely coming at the end of the show, so be ready for that. Um, outside of that, my week's been crazy. Um, I was on a hiring panel at my job. They let you be on that? Well. He just wanted to wear the polo. It's fine. I, I, did, so. I did wear the company polo with the buttons all the way buttoned up. Shout out to Isaac and Ben Farmer loser. in Maryland for telling me that's how you're supposed to wear a polo. I uh, love my mother's side of the family. So I'm on the panel and we have five people we interviewed. Have you guys ever been on an interview panel? Maybe? Once. No. Okay. You guys have applied for jobs. Actually, I'm lying. I interview all my niggas all the time. What? <laughs> okay, Meg. So, um, being on a job interview panel, you get the resume. Right. And mm -hmm. they say typically for a job that requires a college degree, 200 people typically apply. Sounds like my roster. For a a panel, I was nasty. Fuck. <laughs> Even if the panel goes multiple days, at the most, it's going to be twenty people. Mm -hmm. It's typically fifteen. You can do like five a day. You set aside an hour. We had a one day panel for an admin assistant. Five people. Resumes were good, as they always are. Three of the people were unhirable. Why? One had really no experience in the field, so didn't really understand the job qualifications. Was it a man or a woman? That one was a woman. Sexist. Oh, I bet you can suck some real good well, dick. So, no, so, so let that's me tell you. all matters in that position. When you're admin assistant, that's all. This is not Brazzers. It should that be. That was one of them. Mm -hmm. um, another one was unhirable because even though she had a lot of experience, uh -huh. It was in a field that wouldn't necessarily lend itself to being good at what we do. And here's the thing. She worked for a country club for basically 20 years, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I, it was my responsibility to ask her about an on-the-job conflict. She said she'd never had an on-the-job conflict. Well, when you're rich, there's not too many problems. Get this Mexican which, off the lawn, please. She's <laughs> not rich. That's the thing. She worked at a country club with rich no, people. That's my point, though. When you yeah. work at a country club with rich people, they complain about all kinds of shit. But there's no conflict. They'll, well, that's my problem, though. <laughs> the fact that whatever the problem was, she was always on the side of the member, so it was no conflict, made her unhirable to me. Like I need you to have some agency about what you do. And to at least feel like somebody presented me with an issue, they might not have had the strongest opinion, but the other person, I, I need to speak for both sides. I don't like company people, even if I work for the company. You need to establish that you have some type of idea about right and wrong. 20 years, you never had conflict with white people? That's Cam. She, she was like 62. The third person who was unhirable uh -huh. was a man okay. mm -hmm. who had worked for years for my alma mater, right? Okay. <sighs> my question on his panel was about, uh, again, I'm the guy who asked about conflict. So he, I said, what conflict have you had on your job? How did you resolve it? He said, well, had a problem with a faculty member. It went to some office... Um, some equity office or something, and that was that. So I say, whoa, <laughs> I have more questions. Um, how was that conflict resolved? And he was like, oh, I was laid off soon after. He answered your question honestly. Well, he did. <laughs> but here's the thing. I remember where I go to school. Mm -hmm. And it's not just an off office of equity or whatever. It's the office of inclusion and equity. He's a straight white man. So, oh, he definitely made some kind of uh, microaggression. Bingo, <laughs> bingo. 
So I was like, yo, um, after he left, I told the whole panel, I was like, um, I don't have the authority to look at this, but you might want to contact school and find out exactly why he was laid off. Because if he has a problem with the Office of Inclusion and Equity, he probably called somebody a hard R. Like, that's probably what happened. Or, or called somebody the other F word. Or, or a porch monkey. Or a spit. <laughs> I'm saying. Those. Or something. So, so that or was like early in the week. Um, outside of that, creative stuff i didn't do a goose down because i was editing our video from your podcast um goose me down yeah so that's where i am um i have a million things i have to do for us to be our thing how many Um, other people none yet Mm. but i think what i'm gonna do is we're still brunching after this folks stay tuned the first person who is gonna get um lit magazine they're gonna get a special edition with more than five pages, everybody else will get the free one, and then we'll work from there. But, yeah, go ahead. So I have a thing about something. So this has been, this has been on my mind since we talked about it on the pod about a couple weeks ago. Uh-huh. When, or, when are you actually going to sit down and legit seriously think about making Junkyard Dog versus the Clan? <laughs> I can be the voice of some of the clans. That's funny as hell. Um, I can be, we can do the voice. Like, we can make like a web series or something. I'll be the that voice could be of our the, thing. Yeah. Okay. I can be the voice of some of the clan people because I have like country ass accent and shit. Let's okay. we'll, we'll set aside some time over Christmas break. We'll yeah. do a pilot. That'll be fun. I would love to do that. Christmas Enough about clans, the people you guys hear about yeah. every Christmas week. Um, oh, I should say really quickly. Um, I mean, everybody thinks I'm white. So December 14th, talk. if you're in Austin or San Antonio, that's a confirmed date for my 34th birthday party. No. Oh. <laughs> Please don't. Um, I'm good. Give it to me. At, I'll be taking interviews for the best candidates. So <laughs> at Texas Toy Museum, downtown Austin, Texas Toy Museum, that's happening, eight to midnight, twelve fourteen. People have told me that there may be an issue with me having an open invite because it may extend the idea to a certain amount of our <clears throat> fandom. There'll be a a lot of conflict. I'll say that conflict resolution. We'll see how he uh, handles it. But you know, Some hey, I'll I'll step in and handle it. It's okay. Enough about the people you hear about every week. Settle for great values. How has your week been? You know, I should have gone in the middle because your week obviously was better than my week. Um, I didn't really do too much this week. (laughs) (laughs) I'm in nursing school, so um, I learned how to put a catheter in a vagina. Nice. So, um, and also a penis. Ooh. So, um, I'm officially cleared to do that. So, if anyone needs a catheter, you can hit me up. I'll give you my Instagram handle in case you ever need that. Oh, um, you ever get a DM about a cat? A little black market calf. No big deal. No, I can um, match the DM. How much would it cost for you just to touch my penis and pretend like you're doing it? I can imagine get DMs. You like know, that. for a small fee. Meg. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Guys, so, can we get to the business? Only, so, onlyfans.com slash Meg. I also sell feet pics. Um, those are a little bit more expensive, but... <laughs> Someone is in the background on the couch trying not to crack up. And there and they is just a, cracked up. I'm looking at them. There's a wait list for that feet li- that feet put list. Feet put. Well, you can't even just, just send a mass text. You know, I will. Just follow me on Instagram. Let me know what you're interested in. I'll see if I have room for you. Like I said, the feet picks. There's a wait list, but um, I might be expanding soon. You never know. Business is growing. Um. So my week hasn't been interesting, you know. Of course, I like painted my toes so that my new feet pics were fire and something is different. By the way. Thank you. It's very interesting. You know, nonetheless, I try to be. But besides that, you know, nothing too hot in my week. Got my hair done. You know, that's very important for a black woman. And Salute. now I'm here. This is either going to be the greatest episode or the worst episode. Y'all are going to want me here every week. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so let's talk about the big news. Yeah. Miles Garrett, ooh, ooh, ooh. Mason Rudolph. Um, I kind of, as a rule, don't watch Thursday night football. I don't either because short week, lack of prep. Mm-hmm. You can't control the matchup, and it's hard for me to watch it too because you know since I coach it, I'm just kind of I'm around all the time, so I'm like, I would ask you that. How, how much football can you watch? I can only, I watch. It's crazy. I feel like you can't even watch college ball. Since I watch it's a little so bit. Yeah, I, I, I can maybe watch like. Texas, 
Maybe one We're like not talking about Texas football. This maybe week. one like marquee game, oh. like prime time game, and that is it. I can't I can't be around it just because I'm around it all the fucking time. Yeah. And it's just like I just feel like it gets you know, it gets over consumed with it. Mm-hmm. And at the same time I'm just kinda like too much football. Watch too much football like it. That might make you an incel. So Personally, I don't watch Thursday night football because Grey's Anatomy comes on that night. So That's a good reason. There you go. <laughs> People dying on Grey's Anatomy is weird to me. Weird, it, uh, like doctors like die. I'm like, but no, you're in a hospital though. Just fix it. Yeah, yeah, that's not. Didn't somebody get blown up? Works. Hey, if you get no blown spoilers up, spoilers for Grey's Anatomy. That was like season three. Doesn't matter. We have some hey, beginners. You should watch since, it if you since haven't. we have you here. Um, I have a theory. What's the theory that I subscribe to and really nobody else? To me, Katherine Heigl is too pretty to do romantic comedies because I don't believe that she has issues finding men. Mm. Yeah, you're the only one that subscribes to that yeah. theory. Sorry. Everybody we don't think Katherine Heigl's like handsome pretty. No. No. She's okay, but she's not like Who is uh, I'll put it like this. No, wait, wait, wait. No, don't put it like anything. Okay. Who is? Who is what? Who's so pretty to you mm-hmm. specifically that falls into that category? Sama Hayek, easily. That bitch is like 50 and looks like she's 20-something. Okay. So. Well, no, who, who's not a vampire? She ain't a vampire. She's a vampire. vampire. I'm not disparaging the woman. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying, saying that she's timeless. Yeah. But I'm saying... Who but, else? An actual human. Uh, She's an actual... Also, Katherine Heigl's no longer on Grey's Anatomy. So. Well, I know that. I know it's like... uh, Who's on Grey's Anatomy now? Drake and uh, Lucy Liu. My boo, Jesse Williams. That's your man? He's fine as fuck. Which goes to prove, if you're light skinned, you can cheat on whoever you want and still be Um, the man. I didn't say you could cheat on me. Not on you. Just his wife. Yes, correct. With me. (laughs) I'll be fine. Okay. Back to Miles Garrett. This is getting derailed so fast. So Miles Garrett um, goes for a sack on Mason Rudolph. Probably roughs the passer. Mm -hmm. I think we can establish that. Mm -hmm. Mason Rudolph takes umbrage. Tries to pull his helmet off, is unsuccessful. They get back to their feet. Miles Garrett, who is much stronger than Mason Rudolph, successfully pulls his helmet off and swings it at Mason Rudolph and hits him in the head. I would like to interfere. Um, he got kicked in the groin before they got up. That did also happen. In his defense. Twice. Yes. Um, yeah. Takes umbrage, um, takes his helmet off, swings it at him. Miles mm-hmm. Garrett suspended for the season. Um, two other players suspended for at least one game. I have feelings. I'd love to hear how you guys feel about the situation first. You as a coach, you as someone whose opinion has not been shared on the show before. Mm-hmm. Well, um, and I mean, it sucks because, I mean, obviously you don't want to get in a situation where you ever take somebody's helmet and hit him in the fucking head. I mean, I, I'm definitely not saying Mason Rudolph is innocent. He's obviously not because we saw the video. We saw the clip. We saw what he was trying to do. However, like I always tell people, don't react because it's always the other person who gets caught. Always the second person. Yeah. Yep, always the second person. And Miles Garrett's the one that got caught. And it looks like he's this big, aggressive guy. Like, you know, all this shit. And Mason Rudolph, like, now he's trying to be like, well, like, you know, like, he's trying to play innocent victims. Like, no, bitch. Like, you you rattle the cage. Mm-hmm. What the fuck happens? Like, you know, you stir up the hornet's nest. Like, what do you think he's do? Just kind of sit down and fucking... Cry about it? No, Miles Garrett. Miles Garrett's from Texas. He's gonna fuck you up. He's an Aggie. Gig him. Yeah. What did you just do? Um, how do you feel about what happened, Meg? Um, the Browns still run. Am I right? <laughs> so I mean, it wasn't all yeah. in vain. And um, <laughs> they did win the game. I don't know. Suspended without pay. I think Miles Garrett's gonna have to book a lot of club appearances on um, what is that place called in College fans. Station? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He's gonna be at Northgate. Yeah, he's gonna be at Northgate, <laughs> gonna be Northgate for some club appearances. The very first time, I, the one <laughs> and only sure. time I ever went to Northgate, I got so fucked up. I ended up in an alley with my head against the fence. I don't go to Northgate. I never went. The only time I went. Um, Shout out to Kyla. A lot of pink people. I feel surrounded and a little claustrophobic in that environment. Um, I, I was not yeah. around people like that. Where'd you find them? Well, Maybe that's why you're well, in the alleyway. Well, well, no, no. Well, because uh, my friend that I went with, uh, she um, she was on the track team at A and M. Makes sense. And so she was black. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, she's mixed. She's Mexican too. And so she was all her other friends, you know. And so 
it was pretty dope. It was a really dope time. We went out, and I remember like one of the last things I remember was I got this like uh, this martini that they uh, they put on fire, and I fucking chugged it. And then you don't remember? I don't remember shit from there. That fire had drugs in it. Yeah, because I like I, said, I, I woke up was like two ish, and I was in an alley, and my head was against a fence like this, and I just kind of woke up because it was like kind of raining a little bit, like. It was, it was really like kind of, I, I could have got raped and would not know have known. He might have gotten raped and he wouldn't know. I woke up in an alley one time. Did you get raped? I had to get my front seat detailed. So let's talk about Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Colin Kaepernick had a workout. My transition game is pretty tough, isn't it? Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> Colin Kaepernick um, had a workout for NFL teams this mm-hmm. weekend. It said, and this is hard for me, and we've, it's been a a weird two months for us because we know I'm one of those kids who Jay-Z was kind of his dad. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm I'm from that ilk. Um, Jay-Z comes out. Change clothes. Yeah, indeed. Change indeed. He (laughs) comes out and says, basically, a lot of this Colin Kaepernick workout was engineered by Jay-Z telling Roger Goodell, hey, I took a bullet for you. Um, when we announced this deal. So throw Cap a bone. It's very upsetting. Um, coming from Jay-Z. Somebody who never claimed to be. Because I, I can't even say he claimed to be. But is perceived to be a man of the people. Um, Money changes everything though. Well not even changes everything. I think Jay-Z is just Jay-Z. And people like me were so jaded with the idea of Jay-Z. That we ignore the fact that he's a capitalist. And a billionaire. Who does billionaire shit? What have you been um, saying in the past? I don't. About rich people, they what? Well, hey, hey. There's two ways. Different to, opinion. There's two ways to look at it. You what? know, like why not use your money for something good to further an agenda that you also support? I'm not. I'm not disparaging you. I'm certainly not saying Jay Z is a bad person. I think Jay Z does things in the interest of Jay Z, and mm-hmm. sometimes it works out for other people. But you said, like, what about me, rich no, people? Hold for on. For me to say. Mm-hmm. Hey, I look crazy right now. Do me a favor. Yeah. You look crazy. Like, you know, you did something to make yourself look crazy. You're aware that that's the stance that you took. Mm -hmm. So you want to fix it later. Again, like, I'm not saying Jay-Z is a bad guy. I'm just saying, like, I kind of see what Jay-Z stands for now. For Jay-Z, which is fine. Right? So Colin Kaepernick gets his workout and a bunch of teams are invited. And what does Cap do? Right before the workout. Change the location. Moves it an hour up the road. You know why? Why? Because he's smart as shit. He is ahead of the game. Because if he had went through exactly what the NFL protocol was, he would have lost stance in his lawsuit. Um, He probably would have. They would have been able to say, hey, we gave you a shot. That's it. Mm -hmm. So he moves it an hour up the road where it's not sanctioned. Or people have to come watch him if they want to. Mm-hmm. And he can still speak his piece afterward. Watch him throw the ball 55 yards off his back foot on the money. He still has that. Yes. Which yeah, I saw him throw. Yeah, it was good. Arm strength wasn't the issue. Decision making wasn't the issue. What was the issue? Kneeling. Making white people uncomfortable. Yep. Not uncomfortable, angry. They were enraged. Well, sure. But they were, again, they, they were definitely uncomfortable, though. For sure. And, and we have to say, like, as college graduates, as intelligent mm-hmm. people, nobody was mad about him kneeling for the flag. They were mad that he was questioning an establishment that they felt was geared to protect them but hurt other people. Mm-hmm. It's just what it is. Yeah. Like, as somebody who maimed guile for a long time on Street Fighter, I don't give a fuck about no flag. That don't mean nothing to me. People mean something to me. Mm-hmm. Like, is America the very best country on the planet? No. Well, I would say yes. And I would also say, because America is the best country on the planet, I can question the shit out of America. But those things go hand in hand. Like, I can t- talk about the things that are wrong with this country and want it to be better. Like that whole thing, love America or leave America. No, fuck you. I don't care about how you... It's bullshit. Be better. Be better. 
or listen to me talk or beat my ass. It's kind of like one of the last things I remember uh, with my grandpa before he died on my dad's side. Shout out to grandpa. Yeah. Shout out oh, to yeah, Pops yeah, Tristan. Yeah, yeah, he was cool as shit. Um, he always had Siamese cats. I don't know where the fuck he got them, but he always had them. But that leads us to Disney Plus, but keep going. <laughs> I don't know. So, and like I say, you know, kind of lean on that. Like, I, I'll never forget one of the times when I was like really little, and I remember him and my dad were having a conversation. And I remember, like, he told my dad, and he was like, Look, I didn't fight in World War II to defend a fucking flag. I def- I fought in it to defend fucking people. That's it. Real like, fuck. That's the. How dare you finally say some smart shit on episode 89? I've always Actually, said smart better shit. Better late you, you, than never. No, you yeah. a couple of weeks ago, though. Yeah. Did you see what I did to him, Meg? I don't know if you watched the video, but he, I did he was saying something very smart about education. And then I had violin music in the background and then put on the more you know, like that little thing. Mm-hmm. It was super offensive on purpose. But yeah, thank but you it's all good. For your mm-hmm. point. Yeah. Okay. Great transition. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Siamese Cats. What movie was that? 101 uh, Dalmatians? No, Lady and the Tramp. Yes, there Lady and the Tramp. Yes. Lady Let's talk about Disney Plus. I remember the song. Yeah. I, being I the stand up guy that I am, if you there you go. There you go. Being the stand up guy that I am, I purchased my own Disney Plus. Megan, have you procured What a Disney loser. Plus no, of course not. Many of my interviewees have uh, given up their information in order for me to access the Cheetah Girls and Lizzie McGuire, which is there why I watch Disney Plus. I should say this, by the way. And me saying it might ruin it, but me and somebody else. Who's somebody else? Who have not spoken aloud in a few weeks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Still share all our... X. We still share all our streaming. That's stuff, fine. And we know. Because, you know, they're smart. I'm smart. Y'all are going to get back to you at one point, so it's okay. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. <sighs> Enough mm-hmm. about me. I procured my own Disney Plus. Did you get your own Disney Plus? Or do you just have Disney Plus? I have it. How did you get that? That is not important. Oops. Oh, okay. I won't, I won't pry. Long, long story short. You always say that. Just make it short. You paid okay. for it in dick? No, 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 no. I, I wish. That now, would be the smart thing to do. That would be the smart thing to do. I would definitely oh, and I would definitely do that so I can put it on like, you know, one of on my phone, one of on my PlayStation, if I have one of on my smart TV at home. But basically, uh, somebody from my past, like 10 years ago, randomly popped up. And we were talking, and I said, fuck, I need to get Disney Plus, because she actually said, oh, I'll give you one of my logins. It's good. I have one more. Shout out. How the hell did she fill up, like, seven spots anyways? I have no idea. Well, that's why she's his ex. Mm-hmm. That is well, true. <laughs> no, you only get four. No, you can get more. Oh. I think. So. I think you get four for six ninety nine. Let's start at that end of the table. Either what way, only on matter. Watched? I've watched so far. Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks movie, Mighty Ducks cartoon. Cartoon. Okay. Bonkers. Okay. Mighty Ducks movie. Just one? Uh, D2 so far. I'm going to watch, I'll probably watch D3 tonight. Can we confirm that D2 is the best one? Yes. Yeah. D2 and then D1 and D3. Even though D3 is kind of cool. D3 is very sad. It's a lot. Huh? It's a lot. Yeah, it is. Um, because you know, Hans and shit, like I was like, Hans. But, uh, but anyway... Um, I've also watched the original Disney original movie Horse Sense. Okay, that movie was dope as fuck. Interesting. No, it's dope as fuck. It really is because it's like it's funny as shit. Because like one of the bad guys from uh, Con Air that flies a plane, mm-hmm. he's he's like one of the good guys in fucking Horse. Is it John Malkovich? It sounds like these guys no, no, have no, no, a no. lot of spare time. Meg, they do. Stop. <laughs> um, Meg, what have you watched on Disney? Plus? Just the Cheetah Girls. <laughs> Cheetah of Girls. Okay. Cheetah this, Girls. This, Cheetah Sisters. Isn't the mixed girl from Three O W and Cheetah Girl? Or the Puerto Rican chick? Adriana. Adrian Ballion or whatever the fuck her name yeah. is. The play a yeah. one or no? No, not the play a oh. one. She's on there <laughs> for sure. Oh, she's one too. Yeah. So it was just not Natari Naughton from Power. No, she the girl. Th- wow. Um. I, again, we're, age difference. Mm-hmm. Um. So what have I World. watched? I've watched it all. Nice. Um. I've watched Darkwing Duck. I need to do that. I've watched Gargoyles. I've watched. Two seasons and a half of X Men. I've watched both episodes of The Mandalorian. Does this man have a job? Hey, did I watch anything else? <laughs> Oliver and Company. I should probably try and watch Tales anything else. Getting pussy. That'd be cool. What did you watch last night? Uh, you giving away the game, by the way. Um, Roger Cam, Rabbit. Cam definitely watched Song of the South. 
<laughs> they got to put some of this out on there for real. The question if is, they did, did he I, watch I, it? I would, I would die. Yes. Or was, was it playing the, the whole movie. while something you see else the whole was movie? happening? I, I wanted to rob a nigga when I watched Oliver and Company. Them niggas are scammers. <laughs> the Gargoyle scared me as a child. I used to watch it real late at night. You know what's funny? It's Watching it me out. as an adult is going to piss you off. Because you're going to be like, wow, white people. <laughs> like most other things. Like, wow, we doing all this shit to help them and they just sold us out? Yes. That's what happened. Um, so the reason I bring up Disney Plus, 10 million people subscribed week one, right? Netflix, which is twice the price mm -hmm. for less than half the shit, if we're being honest, just signed a deal with Nickelodeon to have their original content and new content. So Good wait move. a minute, we're getting salute your shorts. Camp on Awana, we hold you in our hearts, and when we think hey, about you, racist it makes ass. Hey, dude. Wanna... I'm sorry. What? Fart. Yep. Sing the song or pay the price. It's all in the song. Yeah. So. Budnick. Love and donkey lips. Donkey lips. Oh, he was such a creep. If we were better people, we would. No, if we were worse people, we would name somebody that. Because reasons. But, <laughs> but we're better people. Oh my God, his name is Donkey Lips. Um, so do you think that that response to Disney Plus with all their content? Um, I watched Boy Meets World last night. That's my shit. Topanga's hot. And I, I don't I, like girls. I, 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 Okay, you well, take it too far. Once again, every, I would not. Every but time. I would. You just go She's there. pretty good looking. She's good enough to want to do that. She's super thick. Um, you not big enough for Cam. Leo Rush is her favorite wrestler, and she used to show up to his shows before he got signed. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, what, what are we doing? Okay, so do you think that... While he's eating hot dog. down the ice. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Netflix signing a deal with Nickelodeon is a... Less than, equal to, or greater than response to what Disney Plus is? Uh, less than. Well, no, no. I'm sorry. Let me backtrack. Is it going to have everything? Like, you're going to have the well, game you, shows? We can't say now. Okay. Well, I'm Nick right Arcade now. Would be, if they have Guts, I'm watching Guts. If they have Guts, if they, if, they have, if they have Legend of the Hidden Temple, if they have, do if they have uh, Double Dare, mm -hmm. Nick Arcade. Nick Arcade was my shit. If they have Eureka's Castle. Batley was my dude. I had a toy. And Magellan. Magellan, yeah. You're like, what are y'all talking about? No, I'm just going to say the that Labor's for window. people in my age bracket, mm. I think it's less than. Yeah, Disney because, was, yeah. Disney yeah. has, you know, held the game trophy Mick, for a while. I feel so. like, do you remember Rocket Power? I Very like, vaguely. I feel like that's Very your. Very vaguely. Because we were too old for Rocket Power. Yeah. Like we're literally Rugrats, Dugs. I Rugrats was my shit. Okay. I had the orange That's cassette timeless, tape. Yeah. Uh, all real monsters. Rugrats in Paris. Rugrats no, Rugrats 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 Rugrats. Rugrats. Hold on. What if they get Roundhouse? Roundhouse was dope. Oh shit. If they get all that, I think they have. Oh, they, good... if they get the original, all yeah. that likes. Oh, that's yeah. it. It's a wrap. Uh, um, I don't know about a wrap. wrap. Rocco's Modern Life was our thing. Yep. But they have. They, they're already on Netflix. Cat. I love Cat Dog. Hey, but no offense. Like most thirty-year-olds are busy raising their kids, not watching. That's what Nickelodeon. their kids are on, though. That's what they show. So their kids. I think Disney Plus is still. You know what? I agree that Disney Plus is a bit more timeless. Yes. Um, but Hulu is supposed to get Cartoon Network. Now, to me, Powderpuff Girls all the way. Yeah, if you're the type of adult who wants your kids to be intelligent, mm -hmm. you're showing them Cartoon Network shit, like. Cow and Chicken. Cow and Chicken has my favorite joke of all time. That was a good show. And, and when I say my favorite joke of all time, I mean across any medium. There's one episode of Cow and Chicken where there's this girl who has a beard. Right? Mm -hmm. And I forget if it's Cow or Chicken who approaches her. He says, hey girl, why you have beard? And you know what she says? Hmm. She says, well, my mother was a woman and my father was a man. And I've never laughed so hard. It's the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. Crickets. That's chirp, fine. Chirp, chirp. That's fine. I have my audience. So, okay, enough about that. Um, Meg let me know she did not think our Under Armour topic was interesting. It's really not. I it's think, not. Well, here's what we should say really quick as old guys. 
when Peanut and I were juniors in high school, mm -hmm. that's when Under Armour became a thing. Right? Really? <laughs> He's like, I wasn't there. I don't remember Under Armour being around back then. What what long sleeves did we wear? Not Under Armour. Tell me what we wore. Say a name. Any name. I had Nike. Nike Pro was not a thing when we were juniors. Not Nike Pro, but I, I remember I had Nike tights and Nike top. I didn't have had, Under Armour. You had Nike tights. Yes. But I'm saying you didn't have a Nike top because Nike didn't, there was no Nike Pro in 2000. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I had the, uh, it was the uh, the Academy off-brand. Okay. Yeah. They, let's, yeah, let's Legend be real. Shopping. But no, Under that's when Under, Under Armour first became pop. Oh, I, I used remember, to. I don't remember back Y'all was broke, nigga. I don't think I ever <laughs> owned anything Under Armour. But no, my point is, yeah, when we were kids, that's mm -hmm. when Under Armour first came out. Like, okay. we were in high school. Mm -hmm. So that's when it was like, oh, shit, somebody makes these cool long sleeve things we can wear. Remember, Rob Merrill used to wear the one-armed Under Armour. That's right. That's when, and, that. and, and then when we were a couple years but he older. he was able to. He was good enough to. Well, sure. A couple years older, that's when Reggie Bush was wearing the one arm. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Right? So that was their whole claim to fame. And now Under Armour is reporting like false sales. They're reporting future sales as current sales. Because nobody buys that shit. Because it doesn't matter anymore. Because Nike got into the market and everybody else did. Everybody wears long sleeve shit. Everybody makes it. So they're not they're not unique. They're not special. Yeah, they had a corner of the market, but they didn't patent it, so everybody could do it. That's the whole conversation. I don't wear none of the rock shit. You know why? Because hmm. I love the rock. You know I love the rock. Yeah. I went to WrestleMania in Miami for the first time ever because the rock came out of retirement. Yeah. Rock MAGA is hell. Sorry. Whenever I go to the gym, everybody wearing rock shirts are also wearing American flag on the sleeve shit. I definitely went to, um, so yesterday morning I went to get Brooks Tacos at my go-to spot in San Antonio, which is it's, it's not a very well-known spot at all. Don't say the name. No. Well. No, say the name. Lupita's. It's, it's amazing. It's, it looks like a little mm -hmm. house, seriously, but it's like amazing, like the best tacos ever. And I park, and I look at me to my left, and there's definitely, in the window seal, like on the dashboard, you can see it perfectly, two Make America Great Again hats. And I'm like, really? Okay. Will you get breakfast tacos there again? Is the I, I will, because again, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't reflect the people that own it. It's just the it's a it's a patron that was there, a customer. Okay, fair my enough. My thing, my thing. I'm just kind of like like you know, okay. So you don't like Mexicans, but you eat our food. Okay, cool. They always want what you have to offer. Yep. That's Sounds why quite white. Kids running around. Exactly. So. <laughs> it's a it's a fetish. It's kind of weird. So let's. We've had enough news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we we have skirted around so much shit. That's fine. I want to talk lifestyle stuff. Is that okay? Yeah. Somebody tweeted out. Why are men so casual about their orders being wrong at restaurants? Oh, that's me, baby. If it's wrong, I'm sending it back with the quickness. Okay, but let's get into the why. Um, and it's funny. You see him shaking his head, right? Mm -mm. So, Meg, you order mm -hmm. a hamburger. And this is a, might be a bad example because I don't know your specific stylings, right? I don't eat hamburgers. Like, filet mignon is more my... Speed, but okay. Okay. Let's go ahead. You order a filet mignon. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, and again, I know you eat filet mignon with nothing on it. I know this, guys. Look at me. I know this. I'm just trying to provide <laughs> an example, right? You order a filet mignon, mm -hmm. top of blue cheese. I hate blue cheese. Sure, sure, sure. And But you like blue cheese in this conversation. I would never like blue cheese, and but okay. And they put ranch on it, Right? You're sending it back. Yes, because why would someone ever put ranch on a filet mignon? Sure, but, but you provide. I get, I get your example. Okay. I get where you're going. Me, mm -hmm. me being me, I'm scraping the blue cheese off, mm -hmm. and I'm eating the steak. Yep. I think this is one of the very few actual, factual gender differences. Um, I don't think men are comfortable sending food back. Because we're smarter. That, I'm, not, that, I'm, not, that situation, I'm not saying that. In that, that. situation, we're I'm, smarter. I'm not saying that. I am. Here's in that what, situation, we're smart. Just that situation, we are smart. Here's what I think, and I just want to provide how I feel. People in the service industry, mm -hmm. I think, have a super tough job. I think they work for very little money. Mm -hmm. I, agree. I think that they have to super serve people who don't necessarily respect what they do. We've all seen waiting. I think, and that's a great example, I think they do so much 
for so many people in a short amount of time that mm-hmm. I don't want to inconvenience them. Mm-hmm. That's me talking. Yep. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying that's how I feel. Right. Can you respond to what I'm saying? That's their job. Shoot. That's what they signed up for. Hundred percent. And also, yeah. it's not them. It's the kitchen. So sure. usually, sometimes, sure. sometimes. Now, if you didn't do your job and you decided not to write down my order because you thought you would remember it or so have you and so forth, I really don't care. I just want my food to be correct because mm-hmm. I'm paying for it. And even if I'm not paying for it, which I try to, you know, make that happen all the time, um, I want what I ordered, you know? 100%. And I'll do it nicely. But uh, it's going to get done. Yeah. Um, Peanut, you, mm. anything you want to throw on there before I go? Like I said, we've all seen Waiting. We've all seen, and even though it's a movie and it's Hollywood. Frighten me, by the way. I am more than willing to bet in an industry like that, especially when there's grown people like 30 plus years old that are still serving. Mm-hmm. Something probably terribly went wrong in life. <laughs> and that, I would, and, and, I would, not, I would not go that, that far. I, okay. I, I kind of do in a way. Hyperbolic <laughs> P. Well, no, no. I'm just saying. It, it's just because, again, even though a lot like those, those tests in school that I say, hey, what do you want to be? Even though those tests are bullshit because, again, if everybody was a millionaire or whatever, who's going to clean shit up? But anyway, my thing is, is that reflecting what you said, they've been through a lot. They're going through a lot. You know, it might be a hectic day. Mm. And if you send that shit back and depending on, like, you know, with either server, if they're having a, a bad day, I'm pretty sure they're in cahoots with the kitchen. And they're going to be like, nah, you know what? Like, you know, rub that steak on your dick kind of thing. No, I'm good. If my steak gets rubbed on dick and it still tastes great, I'm fine with it. That, not gonna lie. That's your stance. Yeah. If you spit um, my food and I can't tell and it tastes good, do what you got to do, homie. Just get my food out right. Typically, mm-hmm. in my experience, servers yeah. have been women. Mm-hmm. Typically, um, even if they're not women, they're typically substantially younger than we are. You know, and, and so, and, and you've been around me at restaurants. At, at places. This actually you know. happened to me a long time ago. You want to tell your story? Sure. Go ahead. So, because <laughs> you're going to laugh. So, basically, I, I, I picked up, um, it was like way back. I, think, I don't even think I was 21 yet. No, I was. I was like 21, 22. Mm-hmm. And I picked up uh, this woman from work. She's like a like hotel front desk or something. And we were going to eat. And I said, you know what? Fuck it. Let's go eat at Denny's. Because, you know, that's the kind of person I am. That's a terrible choice. Don't matter. No. Denny's still good. <laughs> he was going to beat. Oh, I was trying to. <laughs> I definitely no, was. If a it guy was, took me to Denny's, yeah. he's not getting shit from me. Nah, he, no, I'm saying he knew what time it was. And Go I ahead. mean, she was kind of with it too a little bit. But what happened <laughs> well, was... You, you know, well, real quick, you know if you can take a girl to Denny's or not. Yeah, I knew with like, her. I, I, would I, I knew with her so. I could. She, she was down with it. All right. And I remember like we had this uh, waiter and he, he was definitely very uh, very sarcastic. Mm-hmm. But he was funny as shit. Mm-hmm. And he kind of got orders messed up. I didn't care. I started... I didn't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. I just kind of like, well, fuck it, whatever. Yeah. She made kind of like a little bit of a fit. About your food. Yes. And I mm-hmm. said, I'm good. I said, mm-hmm. I'm good. We're good. Mm-hmm. I said, mm, yum. See, it's good. Yeah. I didn't give a fuck. I was eating it. And she gave him hell about something else. And he said something like really sarcastic to her. I forgot what it was. I think something about like, you know, well. You like, charge a man up? No, 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 no. Okay. He, he said something because like she, she was one, one of the very few thick women I, I've ever been with. All right. You had to make a concession? And so he, I respect he, it. And so he, he basically, he made some kind of comment like, you know, well, obviously like, you know, um, like, you know, um, uh, finishing your place, not an issue or some shit. Ooh. I fucking died. Oh, you and, didn't and laugh, she, did I you? Did. Oh. I did. I fucking laughed. I just kind of like, like kind of started yeah. laughing. And she looked at me and I just kind of turned. And she was like, nah. she kind of went off, and then he came back yeah. and he apologized. And I followed him. Yeah. I handed him twenty dollars, and I said, "That's fucking hilarious." Hey, you, you got to fight that nigga, dog. No, 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 I, no. Because no, I, I, I feel you that it was funny, but damn, I, 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 I didn't care about her like that. Backers. I did not. Yeah. I did not care about her like that in that sense. Gotta, exactly. We gotta, we gotta, I was just gotta, trying to beat. Gotta, that's gotta, it. We got to stop the run. I do like linebacker shit. <sighs> no, I was just trying to beat. Like that's it. Nothing. And somebody else. who's always in favor of the worker, I would have fought that nigga. Like, no, look, dog. Classy. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll, I will definitely censor that portion. Good God. Why? Because he has a job. So, no, my I whole didn't thing ask is, her to. She just did. Like I said, 
<laughs> she gave consent. Typically, <laughs> she did on her own. Typically, they're younger than us. Mm-hmm. Um, typically, they're women. And yeah. like, I'm not. Y- y'all are around me all the time, so you guys don't consider me intimidating. Of course not, right? You've also been with me in situations yeah. where we had to charge somebody up. True. And they knew what time it was. Mm-hmm. And so I never want to make a person at their place of business feel out of place. Like it's super important to me, right? Yeah. Um, so it's always been yo. But it's funny. So I, I'm also about. somebody who religiously hates cheese on their burgers. That's right. You know, say it. Go Jack in the Box. Like a bacon cheeseburger, no cheese, fool. Just like that. He That's said it. it just like that in high school. Just like that. So you know how many times I've got cheese on burgers. <laughs> and so I just. He said it just like that. I, you, I bacon, scrape it bacon, off. no cheese. You know, because I don't want to make nobody tight like that. Throwing the fool um, in there. Because nine times out of ten, it's something I can fix. Okay. Well, I pose a question. You said you didn't want to make someone feel uncomfortable. Is that the word you use at their mm-hmm. place of business? Mm-hmm. Do people at your job ever make you feel uncomfortable? Well, sure. All righty then. But can I talk about how I deal with it, though? <laughs> but how do you deal with it? I charge niggas up. <laughs> you know, it's never a game. Whenever That's my other thing. Mm. I don't work in the service industry. You do, You kind of do, though. A sure, different type no, sure, of service. Sure, but I also... They pay me too much for you to treat me like I need to be here. That's a weird way of putting it. Yes, it is. Nobody's ever charged me up at my job and left the conversation feeling like they won. Never, ever, ever. Do the people know what you do? Yeah. Listening. Okay, so I just feel like it's your job to service your customers. I understand how you feel. <laughs> I get it. All but right no. then. So. But, but it's no, but it's never like a student couldn't call me and say, "Hey, I need this right now. You have to do it," and I'm not happy with how things are going. It's like, no, you're going through the proper channels. And on top of that, like I remember a very specific call. Where another person at the college, they felt like they didn't give them adequate service. Mm -hmm. It was a kid and his mom. And they explained to me what went wrong. And I said, okay, I'll take care of that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send you to such and such. And on the call, before I transferred them, they say, finally, we got somebody who knows what they're doing. And before I transferred, I said, listen, I really need you to not talk about us like that. I'm sure they tried. And whatever Mm -hmm. they didn't do, we'll resolve. And you know what they said? Not a goddamn thing. Because people, believe it or not, want to be treated like they got to own up to their shit. So, no. I, I I just think this boils down to people doing it respectfully. Because at the end of the day, uh-huh. if, I, if I'm paying for something, I would like to get what I'm paying for, right? Sure. So, if I ask you to do your job in a nice mm-hmm. manner, then you should do your job because I hope, that's your job. Yeah, I hope I'm establishing you're not wrong for asking. No, I get, get it. Food. I get it. Yeah, but there's yeah. If if you're not wrong, I'm just not gonna do it. Well, that's on you. If you like wasting your money on some shit you don't want to eat, that's on you, homie. Hundred percent. I'm gonna scrape the <laughs> shit out that cheese. Um, yeah. Okay. So a couple of more things here. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Megan. You don't exist in the professional wrestling space. I do not, in fact. Um, so I dabble here and there. There was an interesting tweet, mm-hmm. um, and it was about black wrestling supremacists. And I think it speaks to a larger issue. Black Basically, wrestling supremacists, what? We've talked about the ACH stuff. Okay. You and I have had conversations about AEW and all that kind of stuff, and about how even in your your opinion, mm-hmm. you were like, when is a black person or a person of color going to step up, start their own company so that we don't have to worry about these white problems? Which was your assertion, right? Mm-hmm. A white person tweeted out, hey, um, I had this opinion on this black person in wrestling and a bunch of black wrestling supremacists told me my opinion on it doesn't matter. Correct. Correct, yes. To which I said, fuck yeah. <laughs> It doesn't. And I'm so glad that I'm a part of this movement, even if it's just in pro wrestling, that black people's problems are black people's problems. I like, think we should channel this to all portions no, of and life. And we're going to. Not just we're going wrestling. To. That's the bigger point. Because so, I have some shit with that with you know, my job about Somebody it tweeted out, or no, it wasn't somebody, it was me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I basically said, I work for a wrestling company ran by white men who are in their 40s and 50s. 
With that said, I'm all for black people saying they don't give a fuck about a white person's opinion on a black wrestling issue. True. And guess what? You know how many of my white employers had a problem with that? How many? Zero. Because my white employers come to me when it's time to talk about some black shit. Because they're not fucking stupid. Like, as much pro- as much trouble as I give white folks in charge, the white folks that are in charge of the shit that I do tend to kind of understand. I take some credit for that. Because, yeah, I don't take shit off nobody. But, for real, for real, how do you guys, and of course, black woman, Hispanic man, <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> white opinions in people of color spaces Mm -hmm. because me personally i love this new movement that we can ignore white people's opinions on shit that don't involve them i fucking love it i do that with all things not just black people (laughs) but like yeah Yeah. typically for the most part we talked about the kaepernick stuff yeah Mm -hmm. you know we talked about we didn't even really talk about the miles garrett mason rudolph stuff in terms of white and black people but me personally, I don't fucking like Mason Rudolph as a human. That's not me saying people should swing helmets at him. It is me still saying fuck him. And like maybe you shouldn't thing, kick people in the groin. The th- again, the thing that happened to him shouldn't have happened to him, but it's still fuck him. It can be both. Mm-hmm. I can think you deserve safety, and I can also think you don't deserve shit. <laughs> Both Correct. things can be true. So, like, guys, I don't want you to die, but if you get hurt, it's no big deal. If you have to go away to where I don't have to deal with you, great. Yeah. Fuck you. But okay, your story. No, I, and I mean, it's just kind of like, um, and it's crazy. And I mean, I don't want to, I guess, like say too much about it, but you know, it's kind of like, like where I'm at currently, my, you know, where I work at. Um, our population is like about over 80% Hispanic kids. And, you know, the, basically the, the smallest, shout out to South Sand. Yeah. yeah, That's a super inside joke. Yeah, it very much is. (laughs) Um, And so, um, and the, the smallest, um, basically population kids, like, you know, are, you know, white kids. Yeah. But yet one thing we've noticed is like where I'm at, we hire a bunch of, Caucasian, yes, yeah. yes, and they have no fucking clue of how to like work with kids like this because mm-hmm. it's like you're not from where these kids are from. You haven't gone through what they've gone through. Of course, they're not really gonna react to you in a mm-hmm. certain way. Like the only way they're gonna react to you is if you kiss their ass and you, you mm-hmm. give them snacks. Like then they're gonna react to you more positively. But if you don't do none of that shit, they're not really gonna react to you very positive. And and, and one thing, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say what's super interesting, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I I still don't know quite how to address it. Yeah, but. The young lady I was dating for an extended period of time Mm -hmm. when she did her master's program, Mm -hmm. a big part of that was like cultural understanding Mm -hmm. with, you know, other people doing their masters. Who's doing their masters? White teachers. Yeah. And so she would come home and be like, yo, (laughs) again, I think dating me helps. But Mm -hmm. you come home and you're like, yo. These white people have no idea what the fuck is going on out here. No, they Left don't. Left and right. And they like don't. she would tell me, I'm like, yo, I, I I, know like I've helped you, but that's what it is. And, like they don't know. And it's real funny because especially like, you know, my school, like I, I love where I'm at. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, kids are decent. They're very chill. But it's funny because a, a lot of the, a lot of my coworkers that don't look like me or resemble or even you, mm-hmm. they really think they're Michelle Pfeiffer from like Dangerous Minds and shit that they're just going to come in. We've been spending all our lives. None of us were in choir, by the way. <laughs> I was. That's a, I was. I used to You be, haven't sang yet. I used I'm to not be going to. We'll see. And then it was like, what, summer of 01? Different tone. Mm-hmm. Keep going. No, and, and so a lot of them, like, they really think, like, they're going to be, like, Michelle Pfeiffer and Davis Myers or some shit. And I'll, I'll never forget, like, one of them, my first year when I got there, she was like, oh, yeah, like, you know, I just really like working with, like, minority kids. And I, I feel like this is what I was called to do. And I was like. We're like, always, like, a prize to them. It, like, a, it, like, a, exactly. like a fetish. Like a like f- dream fulfillment. Yeah. yeah, like dream fulfillment. Like yeah. a project. Exactly. And I'm just like, <laughs> these kids aren't fucking broken kids. Like, they're normal people like you and I. You know, they're just so, here. It's like yeah. the white women that go to Africa so, for mission trips. Yeah. Just to Shout take pictures the with the African kids. <laughs> and so, needless to say, she didn't finish out the year too stressful and i'm like if you can't handle these kids you you 
Wait till we just, get to the, to the just, real just don't, don't, don't ever teach. Go oh go go be a go be a uh, a door greeter at Walmart. Go do that because if you can't handle these kids, that's below her. <laughs> and Meg, don't let us lessen don't. your point. Did you have something to add? No, sure. go ahead. No, I'm I'm good. I'm good too. Okay. So the last thing, mm-hmm. I'm gonna keep it light because I love you, and I have to say that before we start. Uh oh. And I do love you, genuinely. So last weekend, if you heard the show last week, it was Peanut's birthday. So you have to hear you have to hear the full timeline for you to understand. So it's Peanut's birthday. We agreed to meet for brunch at like two o'clock. I take off about one. I go to H E B. I go to the bakery. I say, hey, I need a cake. I need you to put a happy birthday peanut on the cake. I get the three candle. Okay, listen, he's doing a lot. He bought Peanut a cake for his birthday. I get the three candle. Here we go. I get the five candle. I got the lighter. I'm ready to go. <laughs> we go to brunch. We're doing the mimosa thing. We're having a great time. We go. So typically me and Peanut's move is we go to the park. Mm-hmm. Um, the waitress is there. Take very good care of us. Yes, Shout they do because they're Shout regulars. That's the first move. The second and move. because Cam's really good looking. Debatable. This, it depends on the light. The second move True. is Kung Fu. <laughs> so we get to Kung Fu. Mm-hmm. Cake's in the car. Who I'm leaves like, a cake in the car in well, Texas? It was under 70. I had no idea. It was that. safe. Okay, I had no idea about that. Cake's in the car. I got the cake. Chilling. Ready to go. We go to the restaurant. And this is the part of the story I won't extend. Let's just say Peanut's having a conversation with a young lady. The conversation turns into an early dinner while I'm taking him out for his birthday. And yes, I consider it taking you out because I've paid for everything to this point. Okay, so he decides that he's going next door for that early dinner, which is fine. Where'd you go? It was a a Salvation Pizza for a slice of pizza. That's it. Oh, it was only a slice? Mm -hmm. It was one slice. Yes, it was. Thank you for helping my story. So, I got the cake. I went to the car to get the cake. I got the candles and the cake. I got the lighter. I got at least 10 people around to saying happy birthday. They say, I say, hey, where's Peanut? They say, he went next door. I say, okay, bet. I go next door to get Peanut. I say, hey, Peanut, come over here real quick. He says, well, I just ordered food. I say, okay, but it's pizza. So it'll take a second for them to bring it. Just come here real quick. He's like, no, well, I just ordered food. You getting all this? And I'm like, no, but just come here real quick. Like debates how they write shit down. No, I say, come here real quick. And he's like, no, but I'm, I'm eating pizza. No, like, let we, me be the transcriber. We just ordered pizza. Now, granted, he's with a young lady at this point. Mm-hmm. And so I keep telling him to come here. It takes maybe two minutes saying happy birthday and blow out a cake. If you cut the first piece, let's say four minutes extended. He does not want to leave the restaurant where he ordered the pizza that they still have to bake because he's with somebody. Pussy birthday cake. Uh. Well, he doesn't even know his birthday cake, but he doesn't come. The cashier leaves the register and the cashier is all of 411. She's taller than that. Maybe 106 pounds. And she's, excuse me, sir, you can't raise your voice in here. I need you to be quiet. Me being me, I'm looking at her like, she's right. But I'm angry. But she's right. So I'll be cool. And I tell her, I said, hey, I'm sorry. I just wanted my friend to come here real quick. That is what I said. Hey, I'm sorry. I I wanted my friend to come here real quick. My bad. Now, she gets a little aggressive at this point. And she she's does, still she like, hey, four eleven of she's her. like, okay, sir, but I need you to, I'm like, okay, I understand. So I leave. <sighs> I'm crestfallen at this point. Somebody shows up 20 minutes later. Hey, what did you want? And guess who sings happy birthday to him? Everybody but me because fuck him. I feel like he broke homie code by not just coming to the place I needed him to. 
when I asked him. Girls over house? I would do just that if any of my friends asked me. What say you, young man? Well, your story was maybe about 75% right. There was a lot of inaccuracies he had in there. 75%? Yes, yes. yes. Out. Here we go. So, as soon as Cam gets in, this is us too, he comes in, hey, you gotta go. Here come our pizzas right here. I believe. Okay. That's exactly this. what happened. That's exactly what happened. And okay, like, but did I say you have to go? Did I say come here real quick? No, you said we have to go. And then it turned into, let's go! I believe this too. Yelling I'm fair with that. Loud. We literally just got the food. I'm like, wait a minute. Like, I'm just trying to fucking eat real quick. I we I maybe took about three to five minutes to finish my slice, and I said, I gotta go see what he wants. Pay okay. for it and bounce. Not 20 minutes. I will concede on the time. Mm-hmm. Here's what I also say. What? If I ordered a crab cake sandwich, my favorite thing in the whole world, mm-hmm. and you told me we have to go, would I go right there? No. Or not? Because there's been plenty of times Tell me. that we've been down there and said, hey, we need to go. We need to do this. Wait, no. It's fine. No. It's fine. Wait, we need to leave or we need to go somewhere else? No. Keep I'm it? Keep we, it? No. Nope. No, yeah, we need to go. Answer my question. Yes, I did. Yeah, we need to go. Hey, it's time to go. We need to go. We need to go here. It's fine. It's fine. It's and I, I go over there and say, okay, I'll meet you over there. And I wait for you over there. Okay. Because I know the vibe, Cam. But like I said, I just want to finish my slice. I finished. I paid and I said, hey, you know, I got to go. Guess who's never getting another birthday cake? And that's fine. Also, guess who's making me a cake for my birthday? No. You know who. Who know. makes the best cakes? I don't know. No. Her name starts with a K. Okay. Just tell him. <laughs> no, this is better. The birthday party is going to be fantastic. Look at this and you're all invited, apparently. Yeah. Which is guys, if you enjoyed this episode, on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on, give us a five star review. If you give us a four star review, give me a five star, give Camel one star. Hey, um, fun fact I've never even listened to a podcast, let alone been on one until today. So I'm a first timer all the way around. If we get five stars, it's definitely because I'm here. We took her podcast virginity, sure did pop that cherry. All righty, so good. Five stars, and uh, I'll probably be back if, if you, I have time because booked and busy, you know. We do thank Megan for being on here. Thank you mm-hmm. so much. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns, send us an email to South Congress with a K at gmail.com. Again, South Congress at gmail.com. Meg, we typically end this show a specific way. Okay. I'm going to end the show. He's going to say his name. Mm-hmm. You're going to say your name. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say we're out. Then he's going to say bye. Okay. It's been the South Congress Podcast, episode 89. My name is Cameron. I'm Isaiah. Megan. And we're out. Bye.